32 lost to Michigan derailed Louisville's hopes of a fourth national title. But this story is about two Cardinals of the past who have their sights squarely on the future. Butch Beard was an All-American in 1969. Jerry Eves was the starting point guard for Louisville's 1980 national champs. They helped lay the foundation for the program. But these days they find themselves just a couple of miles from their college home at Simmons College of Kentucky laying a new foundation with a non-scholarship program competing in the National Christian College Athletic Association, where winning games is not the ultimate goal. It's all over! Louisville, national champions, 1980! Everyone asks me, what game do you remember? I know we won the national championship at Louisville, and I know I cut in front of Kiki Van the Wedding, one huge play, but except for that, I don't remember any of it. I just remember the journey. The games, they all run together, but I do understand what athletics did for me, where it's put me today. From starting at point guard for Louisville's first national championship team to a four-year playing stint in the NBA, Jerry Eves has been to basketball's mountaintop. Eves also coached at the collegiate and pro level, and today he's back in Louisville at Simmons College of Kentucky, starting from the bottom trying to build a program where there was none. Another day, another early morning. We're getting ready to start as soon as you come back in. BJ, everybody else is here. Falls up on the baseline, let's go. Simmons is located in one of the poorest zip codes uh, in, in the nation. This is a community that is in the shadows. Some of them are under the illusion that uh, somehow they will make it in sports as a basketball player, NBA player. The genesis of the program came from Reverend Kevin Cosby whose relationship with Eves dates back more than 40 years to Louisville's Ballard High School. That link is the connection that led to Simmons College starting a non-scholarship basketball program. The goal here is to win at life, not sports. That was simply the bait or the lure to get them into the classroom. When he brought this idea to me, I just told him I didn't think it would be a good idea for all the wrong reasons. Wanting to win. If I come here and I want to win, then I'm going to be cutting the players that were trying to get into school. And he kept saying, Jerry, did I ever say anything about winning? I just want you to mentor my young men. I didn't believe that because no one means that. So I told him no. He says, well, we'll get together again in about two weeks. I said, okay, good. So two weeks came, he called me up again. We had lunch, went out, and he asked me again. I said, no. He said, good, we'll get together again in about two weeks. Call me again in two weeks. You ready to start? I said, Rev, I give. The minute that I said I was going to have a basketball team, I had 200 males packed this gymnasium coming, wanting to be on the team, wanting to enroll in school. Eve's first move was to call on his longtime friend and mentor, Butch Beard, a former Louisville All-American and NBA champion. Beard coached in college and the NBA, with Eve serving on his staffs at both levels. It didn't matter that Beard was pushing 70 and living more than 700 miles away. You know, Jerry, I said, I just bought a place in, you know, in Harlem. I said, I, I, I live in New York, okay? I said, I, I can't come to Louisville. So we had to, I had to border, <laughs> had to make a deal. I can be there for four months. I got him into this coaching business, and it's almost like we're stuck at the hip. And so I said, hey, I'll try to come and help you do whatever you have to do here. What is it about this place that brings you to the... It's home. It was almost like the good Lord told us to come back. There's something here that is undone. And it's probably undone in every metropolitan area in this country. To that end, Eves and Beard are trading on Kentucky's religious devotion to the game to help craft a program that allows their players to use basketball and books to overcome challenging situations. Dealing with the issues of my young kids on a daily basis you would have no idea what they go through. I moved out since I turned 18, so I had to pay bills, and I was just working full time, and got stuck in doing that. You know, and Simmons opportunity came up, so I just ran with it. Take care of my, my little brother. He has a low muscle tone. He's not able to walk after class. I go home and get him off the bus, feed him. I do what I can, I do what I gotta do. He's had to do what was necessary to instill a certain level of commitment and discipline into the program. 
to find out who was serious about being a part of Simmons College basketball. And that included routine 6 a.m. practices. Now it makes the players make a commitment to me. And I used to tell them all the time, you can't burn that candle on both ends with me. So you can't stay up all night, you can't run the streets, okay, and come in here at 6 a.m. and mess with me. Because if you do, see, I'm going to make you hate the game and you're going to leave. At Howard, we practiced at 6, but they weren't working. They were scholarship athletes, 100%. So when school was over and the study halls were over, they were done. Not here. They're going straight to work. Some of them have eight-hour jobs. Trying to get up at 6 in the morning, deal with me, and I stay after them. I got him. That's the dumbest sandlot basketball I've ever heard. You said it again. Go to class from 9 to 1. Get a bite to eat, go to work from 1 to 8, get their homework done, and be back here with me again. There's days I don't want to go, but I mean, I got to get up and fight through it. He tells us all the time, the rich people, they not sleep at 6 o'clock in the morning. In my eyes, he's rich, and I know he's up every day, 5.30, 5 o'clock. So, I mean, if you can wake up and handle your business early, that just gives you an advantage. He just kind of let people, you know, filter themselves out. Eves and Beard recognized from the start that they would carry responsibility much greater than what's on the scoreboard when the final buzzer goes off. It falls on African-American males like myself. We have to start to stand up and tell our young people that winning is not important. It's not the reason why you get into athletics. It's not going to make who you are. Because if they didn't have this, probably we'd be reading about them. So they have to see another side of life in order for them to believe that they can, you know, be productive. And so this little basketball piece gives them some identity, gives them some self-worth. It's not going to be easy. We're not going to get everybody. We're not going to get everybody. I wouldn't say it's my second chance, but this is definitely an opportunity for me, so I'll just be trying to make the most of it. I realize that it's a lot more out there in basketball, and I definitely learned a lot about life. What is needed? in urban communities is pathways out, roads out. An important highway has been built in this community through Simmons College of Kentucky. It is the best job I've ever had. It's the most challenging job day in and day out that I've ever had. I want to see if I can be connected with a group of kids who really don't think they can survive out here. And that's what this is all about. Seku Smith reporting that story. Joe Underhill, great job producing it. And it's not just a it's, it's not just a story about hoop. That's a story about hope. And it's man, that was powerful. What what what's happening there is they're not only changing those young men's lives, they're changing generations' lives because it's going to change who they are and the husbands and the fathers that they become. And uh, that that was the strongest. Uh, piece that I've ever seen produced. That, that, uh, I'm, my tithe for the month of April is going to Simmons <laughs> College of Kentucky. No, I mean to tell you that was no, that was powerful it's basketball. So well done, man. That was awesome. Good stuff. Go, Coach Eves. Go, Coach Beard. A young man who was a father. A young man who benefited from resources in our community. For example, the Family Scholar House in parenting his children, a young man who is a servant of the Lord and a great student of Simmons. Would you welcome at this time our student speaker today, Brother Channing Banks, graduate of Simmons. Discovering I had been uh, chosen in this capacity, I was humbled as my inner defender and critic wrestled over the rationale, my inner guide spoke to me as Uncle Mordecai to Esther saying, maybe you have been chosen for such a time as this to share your story. So here it goes. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine, salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine, hanging pic, wait, that one's taken, sorry. But maybe, Maybe some young man needs to know that you can leave the street life and you can make it. Mm -hmm. 
Or maybe there is some single parent out there that is struggling to do the best to raise their child, or you've had a financial windfall, or you may have fallen on homeless times, or you, you may you may be struggling uh, with a secret uh, uh, addiction or, or depression, or you may have lost the love of your life, or you may have lost a loved one to a, a terminal illness or, or gunned down in the street, or you may be from out of town and just gotten homesick, but if I can make it through all these circumstances in a four-year span, then so can you. Or maybe you failed along the way and you feel like it's impossible and you've contemplated quitting. Well, impossible is not a fact, it is an opinion. <laughs> Failure is not a person, it is an event. I too contemplated quitting one time when they took the pictures down in the heritage room. I was inconsolable for days until I realized they were just painting the room. <laughs> But it is those pictures that are the essence and the heart and soul of our university. And looking at those pictures, I can't help but to know that I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Power shows in dripping gold inside my DNA. So on this day, be encouraged, be enlightened, but be in power and claim our day, May the 21st, 2017, as other significant events on this day. Whether it is Lewis and Clark beginning their journey led by a free slave by the name of York, or Amelia Earhart completing her trip around the world, or Muhammad Ali defending, uh, defeating Henry Cooper for the heavyweight title, or Seattle Slough winning the Kentucky Derby. Maybe this is the beginning of your journey. Maybe nobody thought that you would accomplish this feat, or maybe this is your day to shake up the world. But since this is also my day, I had to make the announcement that if anybody were to write my life story, for whatever reason that may be, let them know that Jesus is the best thing that happened to me. Now, as I take my seat, if it had not been for my church family at the Elam Baptist Church, the Louisville Family Scholar House, and this great university, I don't know where my family would be. So I leave you with a charge and a question as I take my seat. The first is a charge from my own Reverend Dr. Cosby, and that is, if our ancestors can accomplish all of this through a crack. What more can we do through an open door? So Simmons Nation, rise up! Simmons Nation, rise up! One more time for the Holy Ghost. Simmons Nation, rise up! Now answer this question for me. Can you Louisville, a city of possibilities. However, with possibilities come opportunity that must be extended to one of Louisville's poorest communities. I can see where Simmons is a beacon of hope, a light, uh, whatever you want to call it. It is a need for the city of Louisville, it's a need for the state of Kentucky, and it's a need for people to get better in life. They've seen a change, they've seen a transformation, um, and it it provides an inspiration and an encouragement that as Simmons has grown, the community can grow also. The Urban League is about education and empowerment, and that's exactly what Simmons is doing. So we absolutely stand ready to assist in any way possible, and we support this project. My current major is communications. I have a 3.7 GPA. I had bypassed a lot of colleges and universities in Nashville, Tennessee. Not only colleges and universities, but HBCUs. 
I end up coming to Simmons because I was at the end, it was the end of the month and I needed a decision. So I came here and I came here by myself. I don't know anybody here. Uh, I don't have any family members, but I end up coming uh, to this HBCU. The California community is currently plagued by reckless traffic, a lack of food options, and vacant housing. The California Sports Complex for Simmons College is designed to drive economic development that stimulates entrepreneurship. With Simmons College and the resurrection and, and bringing it back to hopefully and surpassing what it was a long time ago, that was a mighty, mighty undertaking. And as I learned more about it, I, I just thought if there's any way I can help in a small way, it was uh, something that I would like to do. I am super excited to have a historic black college right next door to me and to see the positive that's coming to this community and we can build and add on to the positive. To give access to affordable higher education and to emphasize health and wellness. The California Sports Complex for Simmons College will repopulate the California community with Simmons students who are here to learn, who need a place to live, and are willing to be productive members in society as they serve as role models and helpers. The California Sports Complex for Simmons College, developing generations and our future. I gotta put her down. We passed the country road about a mile back. Stay with him, Lee. Yes, sir. Coming around on your other wing. She's working up that hill. little engine trouble. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Base colored flies. <laughs> 